Welcome to the Finance Underground. We're no longer underground. We're above ground. So today we're going to do a, a boop, book review on The Simple Path to Wealth. Okay, and I'm just going to run through the chapters really quickly and give you a brief summary of the book. Uh, I'll let you know right up front. It's a fantastic book. I'll go through each chapter really quickly. Well, not each chapter. I'll skip a few chapters, but I'll go through some notes that I've taken about the book and let you know some of the things that Mr. J.L. Collins talks about. So I'm going to be using my good old paper notes here. Chapter one, he tells the story about when he was talking to his 19-year-old daughter and she looked at him and said, Dad, I don't want to spend my life thinking about this. And he's like, what? You know, he's kind of like me. He could talk about finance all day, every day. And he was just like, that's when I realized that not everybody wants to spend their life thinking about investing. They want to live their life doing other productive things, building hospitals and curing cancer and saving the world. And so the Simple Path to Wealth was developed to cater to everyone to be successful in the stock market and not to have to worry about it all the time. He he credits his success to the ability to save 50% of his earnings went into investments, which is pretty impressive in my mind. Um, he also avoided debt. He was very careful about debt, which is another key. And he used index funds as the tool in the stock market to be successful. They're simple yet powerful. <clears throat> He gives a bunch of disclaimers in chapter four. We'll skip those and you can read them on your own. So in part one, chapter one, he talks about debt, that it is the unacceptable burden. He gives you some numbers. He runs credit card numbers, what the kind of interest you're going to pay on those things and what they're going to do to your wealth. He even mentions good debt, which is a good thing to consider. Good debt, right? People say good debt is to buy a house but then they go and buy a house that sucks 50% of their take-home income, right? That's not good debt. So good debt, things maybe like a home, you've got to be ultra conservative with that. Chapter two, he talks about FU money, the freedom money. That's what he calls it. I call it freedom money because FU money gives you the freedom to tell people where to go if you decide to take a different path than what they think like your employer, for instance. Um, money that you've set aside that gives you freedom of choice. Chapter three, can every American retire a millionaire? What do you think? I think the answer is yes. If you start early and you're disciplined, you will have a million dollars. Chapter four is how to think about money. Um, he gives the example of the stock market, which this week's a good example of the stock market crashing. Um, but he talks about the stock market, that it's going to be a wild ride. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. You have to have the emotional strength to just ride that out. You need to look at the stock market. When it crashes and everything comes falling down, that's the time to buy. The stock market is on sale when it drops. He says in chapter six in part two that there's an impending stock market crash that is coming, right? Look back in history, there's always a stock market crash coming. Somebody is always predicting the future that the stock market's gonna crash. And if you predict the stock market's gonna crash long enough, you're gonna be right because eventually it's gonna drop. It comes back to the emotional fortitude to stick out those long, stick out those, the ride long-term. The crash is not the end of the world. Chapter seven, he talks about the stock market always goes up. Over time, the stock market always goes up. Chapter eight, most people lose money in the stock market. Why? Because they're trying to time the market. There is no way to predict the future. You can't outguess the stock market. You're going to lose money if you try bouncing in and out of the stock market. You've got to get in. You've got to stay in. You've got to be committed to ride out the ride. 
Chapter 9, The Big Ugly Event. It talks about the Great Depression and how big of a hit that was. That obviously was the biggest hit on the stock market ever. And it took a while to recover from that one. But it has recovered. And it's gone way past that. Chapter 10, Keep It Simple. So he talks about he's willing to work harder if the return's better. But statistically speaking, you will make more money in index funds than you will choosing individual stocks and trying to time the market. Index funds outperform 89% of professional stock brokers. That's pretty good odds, 89%. You're gonna outperform. So he talks about keeping your investments simple, index funds, Put your money in there, keep it in there, let it grow. Chapter 12, he talks a little bit about bonds. Bonds will help smooth the ride when the market drops. The bond's going to pick that up a little bit. So chapter 13, he talks about portfolio ideas. How much money should you have in stocks? How much money should you have in bonds? And he talks about keeping those balanced, depending if you're trying to grow your money or if you're trying to level it out when you hit retirement and you want to have a little more level ride, not quite the excitement of the up and downs. So what percentage goes where? He talks about that in chapter 13 and 14. He also talks in chapter 14 a little bit about IRAs, 401k, tax advantaged um, accounts. Chapter 15, he talks about international investing. He takes an interesting approach. He tries to keep everything simple. And so international investing, he says, the US market, most of those companies are international companies. And so we're actually getting a piece of the international pie through the companies on the US stock market. Chapter 16, he talks about target retirement funds, which are a pretty good option. If you have something in a 401k and you don't have access to the VT SACs or um, the index funds that you need to get into, the target retirement funds are, are pretty good options for that. Watch for the expense ratios and make sure that they're good. Allocate the assets according to your age. So if you want to be a little more aggressive, choose one that's a little further beyond what you plan to to retire. In chapter 18, he talks about uh, Vanguard, and he's a very big proponent of Vanguard and their funds, and he explains why in chapter 18, that it is a client-owned and operated at cost company. Client-owned, operated at cost. Chapter 19, he goes more into 401ks, 403bs, TSPs, IRAs, Roth IRAs, Roth options, um, ordinary buckets that are not tax advantage or tax advantage buckets and include stocks and bonds in those tax advantage buckets. Chapter 20 is RMD or required minimum distributions. So the government, if they give you a tax break, they are not going to let you get away with not paying taxes. They're going to require you to pull that money out so they can get their hands on it. Chapter 21 talks about health savings accounts, which are a fantastic investment. Uh, the money goes in tax-free, grows tax-free, and is pulled out tax-free. Chapter 22, he talks about a case study, and he just talks about lifestyle creep and warns to be careful as your money, as your income increases, do not let your lifestyle increase with it. Make sure that money goes into savings, investing, so you can be financially independent sooner. Chapter 23, he talks about why he does not like investment advisors. Let me read that chapter. Chapter 24, talks about index funds, Jack Bogle. Chapter 25, talks about why you can't pick winning stocks. He says, you can't pick them, I can't pick them, we just can't outpick the market. Chapter 26, dollar cost averaging. One thing I like about dollar cost averaging chapter is he gives the example that if you look at the stock market, there's a 77% chance that the market will go up. Pretty good odds. So get the money in there so it can go up. Chapter 28, he talks about you can be conned. All of us can be conned. We need to be careful and 
prudent with our money because there are con men and there are people out there who are trying to rip you off. Chapter 29, how much can I spend? When I hit the retirement, how much can I spend? And that's the 4% rule he talks about, explains it very well. And the 4% rule should make it so your money lasts as long as you do. Chapter 30, how do I pull the 4% money? Um, he talks about his three accounts. He's got an IRA, a Roth IRA, and a taxable account. And he goes over the mechanics and the principles of pulling that money. It's not a set automatic thing. You need to still be diligent. You need to watch the money. If the market's going crazy high, then, you know, that's great. But if it's going crazy low, you've got to be really diligent. You've got to cut your expenses. You need to be careful with your spending while that money dips. Chapter 31, Social Security. Will it be there when you retire? Don't plan on it, but if it's there, take it as a bonus. 32, how to give like a billionaire. I really like this chapter. He talked about how to set up a um, foundation, a charitable foundation. And he says you can do that for as little as $25,000. Set up a charitable, charitable foundation through Vanguard that you can run all of your contributions through. I like that because I feel that giving is an important thing. Chapter 33, he talks about your first 10 years after college. This is a great chapter for people who are young, younger than I am. People who are just coming out of college, this is a fantastic chapter. It gives great advice. Um, it's a chapter that he wrote to his daughter of what he would advise her to do as she graduates from college and starts moving on into her career. The rating on this book, I'm gonna to have to say this is a must read. It's a two thumbs up, it's a five stars. Read the book. This is a good one to have in your library because there's information for today and then there's information for when you go to retire, you can refer back to that. So go out, get the book. I'll put a link um, in the description below Pick up the book, read it. It's a simple read, goes quickly, great information. Thanks for being here. Remember that uh, your money is making somebody rich. Is it you?